Hey guys, it's me Sabrina and I am back here for another video for you guys and today we are doing big bold flavors to combat this super cold winter weather that we're in between. I'm not quite sure if I can call it a stew or a chili but it's going to be a happy twist on both of them and it's going to be delicious. <music> with is our spice rub for the entire dish. So you see I have tons of stuff here. We're going to add about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of each thing here. So let's just get started with that. So first thing I'm going to add is some cumin into my bowl here. Come on. Got some cumin in there. i go with some chili powder. ground oregano here you can if you can only get the leaves you can use the leaves but I'm going to use some ground here a healthy dose of that then black pepper some garlic powder here some jira. Jira is roasted cumin. So this is optional for you guys who might not be able to get this, but here in Brooklyn where there are tons of West Indians here, I can get this pretty easily. If you can't get this, then just add more cumin if you want to. Add a little bit of that. Then I'm going to add some curry powder to this. This is duck and goat curry powder. It's a bit heavier and not as lightly bright yellow as some other curries that you might find. You can add whatever curry you have. Then, because you know, it just—it's a nice balance. I'm going to add some cinnamon here. This one's going to be about a test, uh, about a tablespoon, sorry. And some salt, some pink Himalayan sea salt. It looks like a lot of salt, but I'm using this as my seasoning for the entire dish. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of basil because I think it adds a nice little sweetness to the dish that's kind of unexpected and pleasant at the same time. So I'm just going to stir this up and we can just move these over and move on to what meats we're using. So I don't know if you guys saw my, my take on the beef and butter fast, but if you didn't see it, I'll link it up above. But we, I was just so... Un under and so confusingly hungry the entire time. I was eating 12 ounces of beef, but I was just so hungry. So uh, I talked it over with my wonderful sister, the camera lady, and we decided that beef just does not keep us full for whatever reason. We metabolize it too quickly or whatever. So we're going to do this chili slash stew with lamb instead. So I have about two pounds of lamb stew meat here. It's bone in, so I just made some smaller pieces where I could. And then I've got a pound of ground beef, um, not ground beef, ground lamb, sorry, that we're also going to use. I'm just heating up my stock pot here because the first thing we really need to do is brown our, our uh, stew meat. So it's not just pale lumps of meat inside of our stew. So it's heated up nicely. I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil because this is not a non-stick pan. So just like a tisp, just to cover the bottom. Um, there's plenty of fat on the meat, so I don't need to fry it or anything. So just make sure the bottom is covered. And we're going to drop in our meat to brown. And just leave it to brown. So we'll come back once this is brown on all sides and I'll show you in a second. Okay. So our meat is nice and brown. I've got a healthy crust of seasonings and fat at the bottom of my pot here. So I'm just going to 
finished grabbing out my stew meat. And then I'm just going to add my one pound of ground lamb. There we go. Scoop over there. And start breaking that up in here. Let me get a shot of the meat. Nice and brown. Got a nice healthy bark from our spice blend on it. Is it too smoky? So that's all brown. I've got that in there. And I'm just going to add the rest of my seasoning on top of the brown meat. And just continue to break it up a little bit. Make sure that everything is covered and incorporated. So I know many of you are worried that you're not burning seasoning at the bottom, but we're going to do something fancy called deglazing. And basically we're going to take beef stock into the hot pan with all those bits and just pour it in. Pour it in. Off you go. Now you don't have to use store-bought um, beef stock, but I bought my bones too late, so I couldn't add bone broth, which would have been really nice in this. But once you've got your liquid in, you can start scraping the bottom to pick up all of that extra, you know, seasonings and bits of meat. And we're just going to continue to break up the clumps of ground meat in here and continue to scrape the bottom. So now it's a little soupy. Get all those big clumps of meat kind of broken up a little bit. And we're just going to give that two seconds to hang out by itself and let it come back up to a boil. So next thing is one of is that although this is not your traditional chili, I mean, you don't have your bell peppers, your onions, all of that kind of stuff, you know, that's classical Tex-Mex flavors, we are going to try to keep it somewhat traditional and add a little bit of our, uh, a little bit of a tomato product. So this is just some tomato paste that I got in the store. I'm gonna only add about one tablespoon of that, uh, of this into the pot because I do want the sauce to thicken up a little bit. If I just leave it to go like this, it will be a soup. And I kind of want to go for a stew. So to hopefully to thicken it up a little bit, I'm just going to drop a tablespoon of this into there. So I'm just going to get that ready to go. Into the pot. low carb. I would stay away from kale because kale is a little higher in carb than you might want this to be. So I've got about four cups here of collard greens. And I'm just going to pour all of that in. Give it a nice stir. And 
and then I'm just going to let it all simmer together for another 10 to 15 minutes and then we're basically done. Now at this point you might feel like you want more liquid but I don't want this to be super liquidy. I just want enough that if I wanted to put it on top of some broccoli I could do that. But you could put more beef stock in here if you wanted it a bit looser. This is loose enough for me but we're just going to let this go for another 10-15 minutes let the collard greens cook a little bit and let the mushrooms steam and cook as well and then we'll be back and it'll be done. So see you then. So it's been about 20 minutes. After 10 minutes I found that the broth was a little bit bitter from the, uh, the collard greens so I added just a little bit more of the tomato paste and let that simmer for an additional 10 minutes. So. You know, that was the time, once you add the vegetables and it wilts a little bit, that's the time to taste for salt and that kind of thing because you have all that new vegetable in there, so you want to check your salts. And I'll just take out some for you guys. See, there's enough liquid in here without adding any more. And just get some veggies. So this is it. Now if you, again, if you want it to be a little bit thicker than this, you want to make it more of a chili, then you can feel free to cook down some more of the liquid before adding your vegetables. And also you could always add some xanthan gum or guar gum and it'll just tighten up that gravy for you. So guys, this is my stew slash chili for keto. Make sure you try out the recipe. I will be leaving approximate macros down in the description bar below. So make sure you're checking that out. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do so because you know this is awesome and it's going to taste delicious and there's tons more on the way. Thumbs up if you like this content, questions and comments down below and thanks guys for watching. Until next time. Bye!